Hi. Jessica! Hi! You made it on. How are you? I did. I'm great. I was wondering. I was like, well, okay, maybe I'll figure this out. So, okay, we, I think we I got, got it. it. Right. Is this your first Instagram live tutorial, or yeah, not tutorial, but the, interview? Mm -hmm. It is. So I fun. Think so, yeah. That's so fun. <laughs> well, how are you? How's everything going for you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm going to turn up the volume on you so I can hear you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Perfect. Now, can you hear me? I can hear you. Awesome. Well, say what's up to Worship and Creative Community. Hey, Worship and Creative Community. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, I'm actually sitting in my living room right now. It's my day off, so I get to just do whatever I want on Mondays. It's so great. But uh, awesome. we're so I'm excited studio, that so you're in the studio. I, yeah, I do my painting and stuff like that, make some videos. So That's so fun. We love it. Hey, so we're so excited to have you on here with us today. Um, I'm going to be uploading this to YouTube and IGTV and all that kind of stuff. Just put it out there. But we've been following you for quite a while <clears throat> and just seeing what you're posting. You started using hashtag worship and creative, and that's how I discovered you because you used it. Um, and then we just started following you and seeing everything that you're doing. And I got to tell you, Jessica, you are unreal. Like you, the amount of creativity <laughs> and skill that you have when you're just doing your thing and you're painting and your hair is waving all over the place and you're going crazy. I was just like, this chick isn't real. And so uh, I had to, had to, had to have a conversation with you uh, when it comes to creativity and all that you're doing. Uh, but why don't you go ahead real quick. Can you just tell us a little, about, a little bit about who you are, um, where you come from? Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a, a speed painter. I professionally speed paint. And so what that means, if, if any of you do not know, um, so I paint things very fast, typically upside down and in a very entertaining way. So I kind of bring um, a viewership to a painting, whereas most people would probably paint like behind closed doors. I do it like live and I do it very fast. And so that's something that I do professionally. And then um, but I didn't, you know, intend to do that. That was something that just kind of happened. Um, I actually went to art school for um, like web design, graphic design, like um, I actually was a sculpture major. So I like do all kinds of things that I like love creatively. And then um, I'm married to a worship pastor. So we do serve um, in that way and that capacity. And so we get to kind of create different um, experiences that are worshipful that are also creative. And so we do a lot of that kind of stuff. And um, right now we're based in Tennessee. Um, and kind of like the Memphis and also Nashville area um, simultaneously. Yeah. And so that's where we, where we are based. And then um, we travel a lot. <laughs> and so that's a little bit about uh, me. And yeah, so. Wow. So you said you guys are worship pastors? <laughs> yeah. So um, based here in Memphis, um, we serve um, a church called The Village. And we get to do really creative stuff. And um, some of one of the things like experiential is something that I really feel like um, people in the congregation are really enjoying. And that's something that we get to kind of flex and we have like a flex space is what I call it. So yeah. um, I just talk about how um, I love, I love the opportunity to, you know, strengthen my gifts in that arena. And so, yeah. So wow. That's, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. I love, yeah. I love talking to other worship leaders. I've been a worship leader my entire life. That's what I've done. Um, I'm currently no longer leading worship right now though. I'm taking a, a <laughs> time where I'm able to focus on uh, being a campus pastor at our church. So uh, that's what I do now. But worship is like, beyond like the number one love of my life so I love hearing that not only do you paint do you lead worship I know that your your husband leads worship I see you guys do some performances yes, together yes. I do not see <clears throat> he he I do if um and that was probably one of the most interesting things when I started becoming a professional speed painter was getting called a worship leader um because that was like um I, when I first started painting at churches um I was just like considered like this Jesus painter and I and I was called a worship leader and it was what what was interesting I wasn't aware because I was facing like the art but um most of the time the things that were happening behind me when I got the video back or something like that there was just people that were like worshiping like while I was performing and and and, and just I guess really getting connected to the art and having a different um experience uh, I guess visually because that was something maybe that their senses hadn't engaged with before. And that was something that was really neat. And so I'm a worship leader in that sense. So yeah, absolutely. That's, that's yeah, but he sings, he has a beautiful voice and um, he's a really great man. So yeah. That's awesome. Well, I would love to meet him sometime too. But uh, we, I just know that when it comes to worship, it doesn't matter whether you're making a graphic. That's what I preach a lot. Like if you're making a graphic, if you're painting, 
whatever you're doing, if you're giving something to the people so that they can experience Jesus, you're a worship leader. Like that's a part of who we are, you know? So um, I'm glad you finally caught that. That's so awesome. Um, but why don't you, can, can you just tell us about like how you discovered, hey, I can paint or I have a gift for uh, sculpting or whatever that you do, all the things that sure. you do. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I've done art ever since I could hold a crayon. Um, I have always <laughs> been an artist, never, was never not doing art. Um, but we come from modest beginnings, my family. And so I just kind of, my mom growing up, she always told me I could be whatever I wanted to be when I grew up. And so I just, I believed her. And so everything that I do is very unique, but I really felt like it was empowered by like my mom, like who, who taught me that, you know, I could do anything. And I really, I didn't really get, um, I guess the memo that art maybe was like the creative aspect of all that stuff. Was it super like a practical career pursuit, I guess, until I got to college. Yeah. Um, because like that, and I think that I'm, I'm really grateful for that naivety um, because it just made me go full force without any like doubt um, towards all the things that I love, which is what I currently do. And so I've always been in art. I've always pursued that. Um, and so um, I went to art school knowing like that's what I was wanting to do. That was what was empowered. Um, I was empowered to do. And then when I was there, um, while I was there, I had a teacher who, um, you know, encouraged me. She knew about like women and development. And because I come from modest beginnings, there's a lot of mentorship and kind of like, um, like, I guess, when you think of like inner city um, kids that get mentored and kind of helped out of poverty, like it was something like that, but she recommended like the Miss America organization. And surprisingly enough, there's a lot of mentorship there and there's a lot of people that would develop you for free. And so I got into that program and I felt like the Lord um, encouraged me to spread the gospel in that arena. And so that's what I pursued. And so whenever I went into like interview or spoke to schools, I just like talked about Jesus and then I painted and um, I was so like called fun. a Jesus painter. And so um, <laughs> when I competed in Tennessee, because that's where I was based for school, um, I was the only painter in like the history of Miss Tennessee or something like that. But I decided to paint Jesus like on the stage. And I knew that that was going to be because a little bit controversial because that was going to be like a secular platform. But I was yeah. like, well, this is what I do. This was my calling. This is what I'm supposed to do. So that's what I did. And I won talent and um, caught the attention of like an agency in Nashville. And um, I started doing it as a career. I, I got signed wow. and that's what I started doing. And I remember in that journey, um, because my heart is with seventh and eighth grade girls. Um, and I remember in that journey, we were all going through like a book, like as leaders. And they were telling us like um, in the book, like, you know, if you don't take a risk for your faith, then you can't compel the girls that you're leading to do so as well. And so I was like, okay, like, this is, this is my ministry, like, you know, being bold about my faith. And it was really cool when I won talent because I was almost 100% sure that I didn't, I wouldn't because I painted Jesus, but I totally did. And then um, just be, it was neat to see how God rewarded that obedience um, and just being bold and pursuing things that I wasn't familiar with um, to glorify him. And, and he rewarded that. Yeah. And that was neat. And so now not only is it just like a reward, like, cool, you got signed to a talent agency, but it was more like, um, following in obedience kind of led me to where I was always supposed to be. And so that was always something yeah. pretty neat about how I got started. And so now I, I do it professionally um, and have a lot of fun. And so, yeah. You look like you have a lot of fun up there. I'm telling you, I <laughs> yeah, saw, when I first saw the, when I first saw the video, I was like, she's crazy. This is awesome. She's just getting you know, after I it. Love, I get really into it. Um, especially if it's like a, a congregation that's like really like hyped up. Like I like love feeding off the energy of, 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 of the congregation or just like the people that are in the stadium or anything like that. So if there's, there's energy to be had, I I love to, to feed off of it. And so, um, so I'll fun. dance, I'll get into it. I'll like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll bump with them. Like I'll just get into it. And it's really cool. Cause I think that there's some people like me that have a bunch of pin up energy and are just like, you know, ready. to listen. <laughs> So we, we have a good time. That is so fun. I have to ask you though, when you're, when you're like on stage and you're in front of a bunch of people, I know that like for me, when I'm leading worship, I have this awful, awful fear and gut feeling that I'm going to mess it up. Like I have this feeling, I'm like, I'm going to sing the wrong word or I'm going to say something or I'm going to play the wrong chord and everyone's going to notice. Do you ever like have that feeling of I'm going to mess up and this isn't going to look the way it needs to look? Oh, every time, and especially me being um, not like a singer performer. Like I, I always feel like 
um, my performance, like me as a performer, like my back is always to the audience. So I feel like Ooh. I get such an advantage because I don't have to face them. <laughs> so that's always helpful. Um, but yeah, definitely always got stomach jitters, like right before I perform always. But I think the one time I like almost like threw up was when I performed like a halftime for Ohio State. It was Ooh. a homecoming, you know, like a, it was a Ohio State's like a, like halftime, like homecoming thing. And I don't think I had ever been in like an arena. It was like a bowl. And like, and it, and so like the stadium, I was in, in like center or whatever. And I remember walking out and being like, oh my gosh, I think I'm going to throw up. Like, and there was, there was like wind coming and we were in a bowl. So I don't know where the wind was coming from. And it was just, it was, just, it was huge. And it, I don't even know, but I managed, I managed to get through without, without throwing up. So that was good. But that yeah, is so um, great. I, it, yeah, I think that there's definitely jitters every time, but I think that's good. Yeah, that's so fun. Well, you've been you've been very active all over TV and commercials, and you just it's so fun to see someone who who has faith and believes in Jesus and and wants to make sure that they live that type of life, but also is um, in the world in that sense and and still using your gifts the same way and not letting um, your circumstance or what you're doing dictate that. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just so cool to watch you paint and stuff. But I know the journey started. Um, kind of it, it happened for you and you you got this talent agency and you got all this stuff but as when it comes to your journey like what's been your favorite part about from the time you started to where you are now what that what that journey has been like for you seeing god's faithfulness would yeah. definitely be my answer to that because i think like when all of it kind of started um i remember god kind of speaking to me um about how like he was going to use like my art and like my heart for ministry and all this, and he's going to do something with it. But I had like nothing to follow. And so it was crazy because I started out in art school, but then he called me to quit art school and go to seminary. And so I'm about to oh, wow. finish my master um, in seminary right now. And that has been something that has been a huge faith walk. And so I think my favorite part of the journey is just seeing like exactly where I'm at right now is exactly what he told me was going to happen. But like, I had no idea what it was going to look like when I would get there. And, and so right now I'm actively doing all the things that he said I would. And that has been something that's really, really cool to me because I don't have, um, I don't have anything else I could ever attribute to myself. Like it, it could only be him because I, I like didn't know what was going on. <laughs> like, and so I think that's just been my favorite part, seeing his faithfulness, seeing like how he has truly, um, just fulfilled every single thing and led me to every single thing. And even when I don't, and it's given me such boldness to like, even if I don't know, like, like this doesn't make sense to me, um, like following him in seminary and I'm a speed painter, like it doesn't make sense, but it's like every single time, um, all the cards have like, as they've laid out, it's made sense now, like where I'm at. So I have boldness to follow him because he's been faithful. And so that, that's definitely my favorite. For sure. I get emotional That's every time awesome. I'm all excited thinking about it. So it's great. Yeah. Well, when you stay faithful to Jesus, he stays faithful to you. I know that to be true. No matter what we do in our lives, whether we're um, leading worship in a church or you're working in the business and you're running a multi-million company, whatever it is, if you're faithful to God, I, I really do believe and know that he's going to be faithful to us. But um, what? tell us about your future. Like when it comes to your future, you've done amazing things already. And I feel like uh, it's just the beginning for you because you don't hear a lot about painters traveling the world and performing more. I like when I think of a painter, I think of someone who paints in their studio all by themselves. And it's like a right. super emotional yeah. moment, but nobody got to experience it. And then everybody's looking at the picture like, what do you think it means? You know, but for you, like <laughs> you've painted something so like you, you created something that's so special. Um, I would love to know, like, what's your future that you hold that you you feel like God's leading you to? Well, um, what, some of the things that God has put in my heart that I'm still waiting to see fruition, but I know I can see like the steps that are happening for it, um, which I'm kind of, I feel like I'm just sitting back, just like eating popcorn, like watching him work. Like, um, <laughs> but one of the things is he has put on my heart for the longest time. Um, and it's made so much more sense now. Um, like a, an, a creative devotional for girls is what he's yeah. put on my heart. And so that's something I've started. Um, and, and then also we're expanding right now. Um, we're currently, um, a building a new studio for like, um, different, like 
like different types of like uh, content that's like uh, for speaking and for um, encouraging and more stuff that has to do with like the ministry aspect of this calling, which I'm super pumped about. And so um, that's something that is what is next that I can see, especially as we're, I'm finishing my master's, like all the content and the stuff that I've learned recently um, has been used for that. And so those are kind of some of our next steps for our future. And um, I'm really, I'm really pumped because I feel like that's the, that's the big kahuna like that I've been waiting for. And so yeah. um, I'm, I'm really excited to see where he takes it. And I'm, I'm just really excited that he, he's allowed me to be a part. And so yeah. um, we'll just, we'll see what happens because all of it's been, you know, new and different. And so it's been, it's been a very fun and creative journey and um, for sure. Yeah. I love that. Well, you're a busy girl. You have a church. You're painting probably every single day of your life because that's who you are. <laughs> and um, you're traveling all over the world. Um, I would love to know, and I know a lot of us, especially guys like me who uh, I, I carry a lot of hats. I have kids. I have a wife. I have, you know, I just have a lot going on, um, but I sure. still want to be creative. Like, it's so hard for me to take time to just sit down and write a song. You know, sometimes that's so hard for me. But how do you, what's your, like, what, you, what do you do to balance your personal life, your business life? and your creative life, because those are the three things that I feel like you're dealing with every day. Yeah, well, I don't have kids yet. I'm not in that turning point yet, but I do know that like, um, right now just balancing life, like my husband will joke with me all the time. Like he'll say that he has to come to my studio and he has to like pull me out. Cause I'm like, I like love creating, <laughs> but the great thing is that he does too. So we, we're always just like, all like you should like, uh, we're currently in a three car garage that we flipped into a studio. And oh. so that's why we're expanding. So. Um, but it's really cool that, um, I get to share that with him. And so we just, I feel like I make everything a part of the journey. Um, everything that I do, like, um, finding time to make things is something that I use as like, accountability points. Um, so if I really want to kind of like push out, like for example, recently I just did like an Avengers painting, uh, giveaway and people went nuts for it, but I really wanted to, um, push uh, more content out on my portfolio that had to do with more like portraits that were recognizable and iconic and that people kind yeah. of like got excited about. And um, in that, like, I remember when I was like training myself to paint Captain Marvel, for example, um, like I was like painting her face out. And at first it was like a very <clears throat> posterized type of look, like as I was like, like painting it, but I wanted it to be a little bit more of a hyper realism. And so yeah. I was like, approaching in her face and I was like, now I, I'm going to, so I started working on another port, part of her while I let the more posterized image dry, um, which was like her face. So it was like very like, um, like PC and, and colorful. And so I, I was letting that dry, worked on another a area um, and then came back and like, was starting to just kind of blend in the flesh tones. And it started achieving like this hyper realism look. And it was like, Oh my gosh, how did I do that? I don't even know how to do that. And so, like, uh, and, so, and so I was super excited about it. But as I, I made all of that and used that as an accountability point for me to um, grow. Like I knew that by, by pushing myself into like, you know, doing something like that, it was gonna, I was going to learn some things. I was going to, I was going to grow in some things. I was going to um, get better at some things. And then I could create content simultaneously by doing it as a giveaway. And so yeah. like, um, and so after that, like, so I want to grow, I want to create content, I want to also learn, I want to add to my portfolio. So I figure out a situation that's going to, like, fulfill all those. And then that's where I'll, like, pencil it in in my schedule. So, like, it served the giveaway, it served as creating content, it served as growing me, it served as um, teaching me some things, and then also served as, like, you know, just an opportunity for, for me to go to, like, for my portfolio, for me to have more portraits and stuff. And so that's kind of how I will balance things is I will always, my husband sometimes is like, we can't do 500 things on this trip. <laughs> so, but, um, but sometimes if it's something that I can, if I can get away with like trying to make it fulfill all kinds of buckets, then that's, that will create a lot of balance so that I have more free time to do other things. If that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So your, your husband, sounds like he brings you back to like, okay, we, let's, let's go on a, let's go on a day. Let's go do something yeah. where it's he just does. us. And you don't have a paintbrush in your, and you're not thinking about this. You're not on Instagram. You know, I could yeah. see uh, that that coming into play. That's that's why it's so good for us to have someone who completes mm -hmm. us. You know, um, yeah. that's so fun. Well, yeah. I know that um, 
I don't, I know that collaboration is a, a huge part of uh, what I get to do. Um, at our church, our worship pastor, his name is Alex Damari. He um, is a stud and he's one of the best leaders I've ever met in my life. And what he does is he has a team, just a team of people all the time. He's collaborating and all the songs that come from our church um, are always getting written by all these people. He's not the only writer. There's all these writers and they're doing all this stuff and they put out albums. And But, it, but he realizes that it takes a team of people who are going to who make this happen and the collaboration and I'll bring a song and someone will make it even better. And the other person will add to it, you know, um, has that, have you ever done collaboration when it comes to your art and your creativity and what you're doing? And do you think it's important at all? Actually, you know, and I'll say this, cause I actually got this question when I, um, cause it spoke to a group of art students, um, at a, a university I just performed at in Chicago. And what I shared with them was that, for at the beginning of my journey, I think because um, I was very protective of the things I would create. Um, and yeah. so I was always really intimidated by collaboration. And I was always very like, no, I made that like, but in the last few years, I have really grown because I think watching my husband and how he has implemented people and their gifts and their giftings, like in the church has really, really because we've been married like two years. And so watching him and how he like plugs people in and uses their <laughs> giftings, and like how it makes him better has really become a very big interest point for collaboration for me. Because yeah. when I watch that, the thing is, is that like when you watch what people can contribute and, and give, like you are only going to get better. And, and, and you have to reserve like the trust in the Lord, like knowing that like, hey, like what he has for you isn't going to be bypassed. Like, and the only way it's going to be like coming to fruition is through like the coming together of his body. And so like, you know, opening yourself up to that and, and, and also even pursuing it is, is really great. It's a good thing to do because that's what his intention is. That's his plan for us. And, um, and so that's something that uh, I, I definitely encourage collaboration. I have a creative team when I'm really, really wanting like um, to something to, to be really like good, like pursuing um, excellence has a lot of collaboration involved because you're asking people, Hey, be ruthless. Like, critique this to your, I want to hear your feedback. Like, don't like no apologies, like just be terrified. Yeah. And I love that because that's going to help me be better. And, and when you have an environment like that, where people can add and subtract and, and contribute, they're growing, you're growing. And then when everybody is happy and everyone is like, you know, thick skin enough to know that we're all in this together to create something great, then you produce excellence yeah. and that and that is my favorite i love that i love the pursuit of excellence with others and um i love team teamwork creating things um it's the best feeling ever and so if you are one of those people that maybe st struggle with that know that the other side is better there is nothing that anybody could like steal from you there's nothing like because at the end of the day like if you're worried about somebody copying you then you need to grow more like not yeah more so true but, like you need to like know that like your higher levels are going to be on the other side of like, like, cause if people copy you, that's flattery. Like it's not Absolutely. something to be scared about, you know, you Absolutely. need to keep pushing, produce more. Yeah. That's so huge. I love that. Especially as artists. I feel like a lot of us who are artists in whatever craft that is, whether it's painting or, or graphics, like we have on our channel a lot. Um, a lot of people, it's their heart and soul and they're pouring out their heart and soul. So I get why it's so hard for them to have anybody critique or say anything about it, but it's literally the most important part of your growth when it comes to your craft. You're only going to get better when you allow people to come in and just tear you apart and help you, you know, in a way of like, Hey, this is, I love the idea, but here's how you can make it even better. And when you're open to that, I feel like you, you're just going to grow so much more than you can ever imagine, you know? And so, um, that's awesome. Keep it up when it comes to getting people in your life to grow. And if, if you're listening and you're, and you're watching this or you're going to watch this later, I'm telling you, get people in your life, put people in your life that'll make you better, that'll push you, that'll tell you the truth. You need people who tell you the truth because sometimes uh, you just need to start all over and throw the first one away. You know what I'm saying? That's okay. Like there's times where I've started and I'm like, well, this is really bad. So I'm going to throw it away. And I, I literally throw it away and start over. Or sometimes I have something and it, and it turns into something beautiful, but it was supposed to be something else. But because someone else came in and made, it totally turned into a totally different song or, or graphic. Um, with our team, our graphics team at our church, uh, when I was on that team, uh, I'd, every single time I made a graphic, I'd, I'd sit back in my chair, I'd turn my computer around and say, 
tell me what you guys love and hate about it. And I just sit there. We just let them just yeah. tear it apart. And um, they were very opinionated all the time. And I could have easily just given up. And But it's made me better. It's made me better at my craft. It's made me better about the way I think. And it's so important that we, uh, we all have that type of attitude and we can grow in so many ways. Um, quick question. What are some challenges that you have uh, in being, speaking of, I start something and I throw it away. <laughs> what are some challenges that you have when it comes to uh, being creative, c coming up with new ideas? One of the things I think would be perfectionism because as a painter um, and as an artist, and I feel like anybody that is like an artist can totally relate to this is that um, because you're so involved, because it is your offering, like this is what I have. Um, one of the things that I think is struggling with, like trying to like step away and let it be finished. Like, and so I think that definitely would be something that I would struggle with, but in my, this, this year, one of the things I'm focusing on is like quality, like over quantity kind of yeah. thing. And so I'm pursuing yeah. excellence and balancing that with perfectionism is definitely something I'm glad I am taking on to learn personally, because, um, you can't, you can like, you cannot, um, like my husband and I will watch Shark Tank and what is it? I think Mark Cuban who said like the enemy of like growth is perfectionism or something like that. And my husband told me that the other day and I was like, that's right, man, that's right. And so like <laughs> little nuggets of wisdom. And so, but he, but it's true because like, as you pursue excellence and stuff like that, like you still got to keep going to that next level and knowing that there's more levels you've got to understand. Like, and there's times to like really kind of, you know, hedge out, whether or not like something perfect or whatever, but also realizing that, Hey, there's going to be a lot more projects that you can exercise on, you know, and, 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 and try to do better on like, just, but reserve yeah. it. Don't spend all your time on this one, one thing. And, and so um, I think, you know, wel welcoming people to your process is a huge way to break the perfectionism cycle. Um, and so like, I did a performance painting like at Easter, for example, um, and it, it started out like a totally different image in my sketches and in my thumbnails before I finished it. And we were actually in Chicago. We were practicing in um, my husband, Tyson's um, dad's. He's also a pastor in Chicago gym, like their church's gym. And so we had it all sprawled out and I was practicing in there because it's like a 24 foot long glass easel. And yeah, I just felt like Jesus kept looking like Peach from Mario Kart. And so I was like, this isn't working out. I was like, it's not working out. And I like did want, I was kind of nervous, but then I welcomed like his dad and his mom and Tyson. We were all like looking at it and constructing. And then we were like, yeah, we got to take this off. We got to take this off. Let's try this again. And so, and like, we had like a powwow and it was so cool. Cause we were talking about like how I wanted Jesus to come out like a victor. Like it wasn't, he was a victim and like talking about like these things. It was just like almost like a Bible study, like pounding it out. And so we were like growing from it. And, and because I was welcoming him, welcoming like them into the like the process and they were helping giving feedback and so like anybody that you know can be welcome to that process and you want that because those are the people that are are you know being served by like by the by the ministry that you're doing creatively and so if it's people that aren't even creative that's great you want their feedback too because you want to see what is your art communicating and so i think that that um you know one of the struggles like you know being perfectionism the best way to like tap out of that is to welcome people to your process and then also to realize, Hey, there's other things that you can still, you know, so you know exercise yeah. on or you can come back to that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. That's so good. I love that. Uh, what's just something on your heart right now. You, you have, you just, you could tell me anything. I'm just a lost boy just sitting here trying to figure <laughs> out how to be creative. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know where to go next. What's something um, on your heart that you could tell me right now? One of the things that I love um, right now and I'm obsessed with, and I think this is what's going to probably flourish out later, um, is I've been studying God, especially, like, because my life is super hyper-creative. Like, all I do is I'm just always in, like, creativity and stuff. And so, but one of the things, like, in my spiritual walk is learning about who God is as a creator. Yes. and being like that in in like the like the world and like wondering like like that is what's my the thing that the Lord has been teaching me and it is awesome so my husband laughs at me because I'm like obsessed with the verse like Ephesians 2 10 um because and not because it's like yes we're his masterpiece whatever but like if you really dig deep and study the Greek of that verse um where it says masterpiece and it's also like workmanship like yeah. workmanship in the Greek like it's like it's craftsmanship 
And so when we think that God is saying that we are his masterpiece, he's using the connotation of masterpiece, like the highest level, like, you know, wah, like, but that is also like the word he's also simultaneously using for like craftsmanship. Like yeah. we as artists own understand craftsmanship, you know, like yeah. excellent craftsmanship. He is referring to us as his excellent, like the highest level of his craftsmanship. I'm just blown away because it just shows like, I don't know, his relationship with us and he is a creator indeed, you know, yeah. and him referring to us and his, his love for us, like that just blew. And you could, I could, you could go so many different ways with that verse um, and reading in and reading more about that. And I would, I would go on forever, but I, I won't. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning constantly um, about God as a creator and, and what that means for his relationship for us and his plan for us and, and everything that he has for us and who he, who he is in, in fact, as a creator and how that oh. like overflows into his love and all those different things. It's, it's, it's been a really neat way to like a different aspect of him. That's like, Whoa, I totally get that. Cause I'm an artist, you know, and I really yeah. feel like artists themselves reflect that about him as well. You know, that's the kind of thing that um, really is a huge testament to the fact that we have a God because he is, yeah. he's the only creator God. And so yeah. that's one of the things blowing me away right now. That's so fun. That is so powerful, Jessica. Thank you so much for that. That is, I'm, I feel encouraged right now. I'm like, oh gosh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> so good. Because I, I think that people, like, especially the church, it's so easy to say the church isn't creative because you know, to be honest with you, the, the world is doing amazing things. And you see things on TV, you see the shows, you see the things that they're coming up with, that they're putting out there. Um, but there's, we have no excuse. We have no excuse not to do amazing, creative things. But it takes us just remembering who our creator is. And he created us for that purpose, you know. And just standing up in 2015, in 2015, May 20th, I started worshiping creative, right? And I, it started with one post on Instagram. And then I did one more on Instagram and then I quit because uh, I, I was insecure and nobody liked my posts and I had 22 followers. It was like one of those super random moments. But then fast forward to 2018 of uh, June, what was it? June 30th of 2018, the Lord put on my heart. He said, Julian, you quit once before. You need to pick this back up because this is what you're called. This is a huge part of your calling and what you're supposed to do for the kingdom of God. And I'm so so glad that I picked it back up June 30th of 2018. Three years later, now four years, I'm sitting here going, my gosh, if I would have just picked this up in 2015, but I didn't. But here we are today, and I get to talk to Jessica Haas, and it's because of <laughs> the obedience that God has given us and, and us just being real to who he is and in our, in our calling and who we're supposed to be. Man, let's just be real to ourselves. Jessica, be real to yourself all the time, no matter how big you get, because you're going you're gonna to do amazing things more than you already have, and you're going to get so huge. Everyone in the world is going to know your name, but stay true to the Lord. Stay focused on who he is, and I promise you, like, his, his, what he has planned for you is going to be so much bigger than you can ever come up with on your own, and that's for everybody. That's for me. That's for every single person who would ever listen to this, because it's so important to not, never forget, like you said, the creator created you for this purpose and that we are his masterpiece. So it's our responsibility to make sure we shine the light of Jesus to the world. But Jessica, you're so amazing. Thank you so much for, for getting on Instagram live with me. I appreciate it. I just randomly was just, it was a long shot. I was like, she's never going to say yes. Everybody I've asked who I want to have an interview with told me, didn't even respond to me, but you responded in such a way. I'm like, okay, there's hope in the world. Um, <laughs> Jessica, you're awesome. I appreciate you joining us today. Um, real quick, before you leave, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. You ready? You ready? Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Coke Ooh. Zero. I really like Coke Zero. Ooh, good choice, though. Pepsi is the worst. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they sponsor you, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite color? I really love pink. I figured I that. Oh, I, walked, I, I looked at it. your website. It's so saturated. I, I looked at your website, and I'm like, this girl loves pink. I do. It's such, it's such a bold color. Okay. But, yeah. DC or Marvel? Marvel. Ooh, okay. I was going to judge you on that one if you said DC. But yeah, you made the I good choice. Avengers, so. You just did it. Hey, by the way, those were so 
amazing. I like, I told my wife, I was like, I, I am going to die. These are absolutely amazing. That's the kind of stuff I'll put in our house and I don't care what it, what it looks like and how different it is from our house. I will do it because it's amazing. I'm a Marvel freak, but, uh, you are so amazing. My wife just commented, Jessica, you are a gift praying for you and your husband. She thank loves you. it. But hey, thank you so much, Jessica. Um, let's stay connected. Hopefully I can get you out to our church to do something with our ladies oh, conference. Yeah, that would be so, that would be so fun. Um, but we'll work on that. We'll see what we can do. But so glad that you came on with us today. Uh, tell your husband we said hello. And um, I just pray that you have an amazing time. Can I pray for you before we go? Sure, sure. Yes. All right. So Father, we thank you so much for Jessica and her ministry and all that she's doing, God. God, I pray that she just continues to stay faithful to your word, faithful to who you are and what you have for her life, Lord. And she never forgets what you've done for her, the redemption that you've given her, Lord. When you died on that cross, you died for Jessica so that she can have eternal life with you, Lord. God, help her to be the light in the world. I pray favor over her ministry and that all that she does, she doesn't even have to try hard, but pe people will be begging her to come and, and they'll pay her to paint, Lord. We thank you so much for her being the light of the world and all that she does. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, Jessica, thank you so much. Let's do this again sometime, okay? Okay, sounds great. All awesome. right, thank you. We'll see ya. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.